गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल फाइन ओके वेरी गुड स्टूडेंट्स नाउ इज द सेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स इन द प्रीवियस सेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स आई हैड स्टार्टेड द न्यू चैप्टर एग्रीगेट डिमांड ओके एंड इन दैट वेरी सेशन we were discussing about aggregate demand of an economy okay and we came to know that aggregate demand is some total of the demands by all the people of different sectors with different purposes and at different levels of income okay separately also we have seen that this aggregate demand can be classified can be bifurcated into the four components called household consumption demand investment demand government's final consumption demand and net export demand okay that means aggregate demand is equal to household consumption demand denoted by c investment demand denoted by i government's demand denoted by g and net export demand denoted by x minus m okay so from this point of view you can say ad that means aggregate demand is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m okay the aggregate demand can also be defined in terms of the expenditures made by all the sectors of an economy on goods and services thus aggregate demand can also be defined as some total of private final consumption expenditure expressed as c investment expenditure expressed as i government's final consumption expense and net export expenditure denoted by x minus m okay so from this point of view also aggregate demand is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m okay but since net export demand and the government's demand for goods and services are the smaller parts or minimal parts of aggregate demand therefore keynes has considered only the two major components of aggregate demand consumption demand and investment demand for the simplification of the theories or for theoretical explanation to understand the functioning of an economy and the short term equilibrium of an economy so in keynesian approach we can say aggregate demand is equal to c plus i in which c denotes consumption demand and i denotes investment demand okay now we shall discuss them one by one in detail okay so let us first take up the first major component of aggregate demand that is c what is c here c is consumption demand here that means what it refers to the demand for consumer goods by the household sector for consumption right then what is consumption and what are the types of consumption what is the trend of consumption all these things we will discuss one by one As students when we say consumption 
then it refers to an economic activity through which goods and services are used or consumed by the consumers for the satisfaction of their wants okay this is called consumption that means any act of using a commodity to fulfill the need to satisfy the want of a consumer will be called as consumption okay now in macroeconomics this consumption has been divided into the two categories the first category of consumption is the category of autonomous consumption that means consumption is of the two types one is called autonomous consumption and the other is called induced consumption okay let us first discuss about autonomous consumption what is that you know students everyone needs a minimum level of consumption every day to survive and if this level of consumption is not uh, done by the consumer then his survival will be difficult okay everyone needs minimum food minimum clothes minimum shelter etc in order to survive in the society this minimum level of consumption is required to everyone for survival okay in macroeconomics analysis this minimum level of consumption has been called as autonomous consumption now a question arises why it is called autonomous consumption As students this minimum level of consumption is called autonomous consumption because it is irrespective of the income that means the level of this consumption does not depend on the level of income okay even when there is zero level of income this minimum level of consumption takes place it happens okay that means if a person is not earning even a money however he will do this minimum level of consumption now you can say you can ask me sir if there is no income then from where this consumption will take place okay this minimum level of consumption takes place either from previous savings or through borrowings okay these are the two basic sources through which the minimum level of consumption can be uh, maintained even if the level of income is zero okay and you know students this autonomous consumption in macroeconomic analysis is denoted by c bar there is a bar above the c that is called autonomous consumption okay and if you draw the curve of autonomous consumption by keeping the level of income along y axis of the diagram and consumption along x axis on the diagram then you will find that the autonomous consumption curve is a straight line parallel to x axis it remains constant throughout okay because it does not depend on income therefore the minimum consumption curve or autonomous consumption curve is a straight line parallel to x axis okay what is autonomous consumption we have seen the second type of consumption is called induced consumption in general and you know students this induced consumption in fact 
is that level of consumption which directly depends on the level of income okay other than the basic things other than the basic requirements we also need lot of other things lot of things to consume in our everyday life so except the basic needs except the basic goods required to fulfill the basic needs whatever goods we purchase whatever uh, goods and services we consume to satisfy our other different wants all this will be called as induced consumption that directly depends on the level of income that means what that means if income rises then induced consumption also rises and if income falls induced consumption also falls okay mind students this induced consumption in fact depends on income when income rises induced consumption rises and vice versa but not in the same proportion that means the rate at which income increases at the same rate induced consumption does not increase why there is a psychological law of consumption which was discovered by keynes and this psychological law of consumption we will discuss later on now let us see if you draw the graph the curve of induced consumption then you will find that uh, if you keep the level of income along y axis and the level of consumption level of induced consumption along x axis then the induced consumption curve will be moving upward from to uh, from left to right showing a direct relationship between the level of income and the level of consumption okay but you know students what will be the level of induced consumption in an economy it depends on marginal propensity to consume mpc what is marginal propensity to consume mpc we said discuss later on here simply we have to understand that when we multiply the level of income with marginal propensity to consume mpc then it denotes the level of induced consumption okay so if we calculate a uh, induced consumption in this way then symbolically it can be denoted as a small b into y a small b is mpc here and y is the level of income here okay autonomous consumption is denoted by c bar whereas induced consumption is denoted by b y so we may now conclude that the total consumption of an economy is equal to autonomous consumption plus induced consumption since autonomous consumption is denoted by c bar and induced consumption is denoted by b by thus c uh, that means total consumption c is equal to c bar plus b by e okay c bar plus b by symbolically presenting the total consumption of an economy okay right you know the major determinant of aggregate demand in the economy is the induced consumption so when we explain consumption function and propensity to consume etc then these explanations are in respect of the induced consumption not in respect of the autonomous consumption however it has its importance it has its relevance in uh, in uh, establishing the relations 
of different microeconomic variables that we shall discuss later on. Now, students, let us see about let us discuss about conjunction function. What is called function? It is a mathematical term. I think you may be knowing about this. Huh? A mathematical explanation between the two or more variables is called function. As for example, if we say x is the function of y, that means there is a unique value of x for any change in the value of y. That means if x is the function of y, then the value of x will depend on the value of y. This is called function in simple way. Here, when we say conjunction function, then it refers to mathematical explanation or functional explanation of the relationship between the level of income and the level of conjunction. And this conjunction function can be symbolically expressed as C is the function of Y. Y is under bracket, C is the function of Y. That means the level of conjunction depends on the level of income. Okay? There is a direct and positive relationship found between the level of income and the level of conjunction as we have seen in the previous discussion. But mind, this relationship is not proportionate but disproportionate. Why? Because of the psychological law of conjunction. You know students, Keynes has discovered that a law operates during the course of conjunction that is called the psychological law of conjunction. What about this law? This law states that as income increases, consumption also increases, but not at the same rate at which income increases. That means increase in income increase in consumption in response to increase in income will always be less than that of increase in income. Okay, this is called the psychological law of consumption propounded by Keynes. And it is natural, it happens. People usually whatever they earn, they do not want to spend all of their earning, all of their income, all of sudden at once, rather they want to keep a part of their income as saving. So whatever income generates, the entire income is not spent on consumption, rather a part of it is saved. So automatically there will be increase in consumption, but not in the same proportion as increase in income has taken place. This is the psychological law of consumption. Okay, students. And you know, Based on this psychological law of consumption, certain uh, basic relationship can be established between the level of income and the level of consumption. As for example, when there is zero level of income, there happens to be a minimum level of consumption that is called autonomous consumption already we have discussed. And if there is no generation of income, but there is autonomous consumption, then it will lead to negative saving. Why? Because it takes place either from savings or through borrowings. Okay? When income rises, consumption also increases. But in the beginning, which in consumption happens to be high at lower level of income. That means in the beginning when income starts to increase, consumption also increases 
and in this stage in this in the beginning the increase in consumption will be more than that of increase in income why because it has been observed that the propensity to consume of the people happens to be very high at lower level of income as most of their wants are unsatisfied because of the lower level of income you know what happens a certain level comes when the level of income and the level of consumption becomes equal to each other okay and where the level of income and the level of consumption are equal to each other that is called break even point in terminology of microeconomics okay and beyond the break even point if income again increases certainly there will be increase in consumption but now the increase in consumption will be less than that of increase in income why because it has been observed that propensity to consume happens to be low at higher level of income okay so the consumption function in fact explains these three types of relationship between the level of income and the level of consumption which you can draw with a diagram with a graph also you can so if you draw the income curve if it will start from origin moving in upward from left to right if you draw the consumption curve it will also be moving in upward direction from left to right but it will not start from origin but from any other point of y axis showing that much level of uh, autonomous consumption you will find in the figure in the diagram if you draw this income curve and consumption curve or both simultaneously you will find that before the break even point the consumption curve is above the income curve at break even point the income curve and consumption curve are intersecting each other and beyond the break even point the break even point consumption curve is below the income curve okay all this is because of the psychological law of consumption okay students so now we have discussed uh, we have discussed till now the meaning and types of consumption consumption function uh, behavior of consumption in respect of income okay and we have seen psychological law of consumption etc we have discussed a uh, still some important concepts related to consumption function are left to discuss which i would like to discuss tomorrow not today okay and i would like to say sorry for today thank you very much